first speaker in the section is Ricard Casanovas. He's a student of A levels at San Miguel del Sanz School associated to Fundación Trams. Ricard is presenting today his awarded research project entitled Click, an adaptive keyboard for children with disabilities. The research paper is set of a structured and research-oriented activities carried out by all students from Baccalaureate, the period uh, previous to university, with a guidance and follow-up of a teacher in order to consolidate their skills on research. It can be framed within a disciplinary field or interdisciplinary and transversal, of course. The students' hours of work is approximately of 70 hours and usually takes place between the end of the first year and the beginning of the second year of A-levels. After this short the introduction, but it's a long career and is uh, so a student uh, well known around the media so that our international guests are set into context. Please, Ricard, I invite you to come to the stage to start with your presentation. Congrats, champion. Uh, you do the possible, you do it possible. Thank you very much, Ricard. Come on. Today you're going to see a different kind of uh, research project presentation and uh, I hope that you like it. Imagine that you're six years old. You cannot talk. You cannot hear, you can't almost see, and you can only use one hand. How do you feel? Five years ago, my brother Martí was diagnosed with the IBG, and in a time of nine months, Martí went from perfect to die. In the last three months, way farther from the disease, one of Marty's main frustrations was not being able to communicate with his family because Marty could only communicate with his dad. Hello, I'm Ricard Casanova's Pons and today I'm going to present you my research project. At that time, uh, I was taking part in a robotics group called the Sandbox. The Samperex uh, were competing in a competition called the First Lego League. And taking advantage of that year's uh, slogan being World Class Education, we uh, decided to create a tool to help kids like Marty uh, have a better communication, a more easy and fluid communication. The result of uh, that competition was a prototype of a, Lego, of a Lego keyboard and an app, which led us to the second place in the final state challenge. But what were we, the Sandbarangs, really doing? When a person or a transmitter wants to send a message to a receiver, he does it throughout the channel, and within this channel, throughout the code. But what happens when this channel and this code disappear? It is from here where the main objective of my research project comes from, creating and developing a 3D design and prototype of a functional and ergonomic keyboard adapted for children with disabilities like Martin. And behind this main objective, lots of others like learning how 3D printing works and learning uh, the design, uh, the, the technological design process. So, like in all projects, at the beginning, some hypotheses were raised. The first one was that with the click, uh, we could get kids like Marty a better education, making it more easy and more fluid. Another one was that uh, following the technological design process, we could achieve a good product that would uh, fit all the, requir the requirements that we have established. And the third one was that this final prototype could be globally commercialized. So it is from here where the journey of my project begins. Click, an adapted keyword for children with disabilities. 
To achieve the final prototype, I followed the technological design process. This process consist, consists of five parts. The research and identification of needs, the development and planning of the project, the prototype and its assembly, the test of the prototype, and the ident identification of poss possible improvements to be made. Let's get in the first step. In the first step, I saw that a good research can lead to a good product. So I informed myself about the DIPG and which disabilities it involved. In the disabilities, I saw that there were five types of them. The physical ones, the sensory ones, the communication and speaking ones, the intellectual ones, and the mental disorders. The DIPG involved three out of, the, out of these five types of disorders, which were the physical ones, the sensory ones, and the communication and speaking ones. I've been talking to you about the DIPG, but what really is the DIPG? The DIPG, also known as diffuse intrinsic glioma, uh, pointing glioma, it is a type of growth cancer that is diagnosed in children between six and seven years old. It is called glioma because it is, a type, it is a type of cancer. It is called diffuse because it's not focused on a tumor, but its malignant cells spread for your body like the bad weeds on your garden will do. And it is called pontine because it is located on the upper part of your spine, specifically on the pons. The fact that it's located here makes that it doesn't affect the cognitive part of your brain, but uh, it affects the motor part of your brain, gradually taking all your senses and all your movements of your body. So once I had informed myself about the DIPG and which uh, disabilities it involved, I set my prototype a series of requirements. These requirements were that it had to have a nice interface, it had to allow to be used with little or no precision, it had to have a push button to notify or warn of any emergency or message to your surroundings. It had to have bright colors. It had to require minimum effort uh, to communicate. And it had to be light and resistant. So once I had all the requirements, I went on to the planning and development of the project. To plan the course of the project, I used the Gantt diagram. In the Gantt diagram, you identify every task needed to, find, uh, to reach the end of the project and you assign each task a serious amount of time. Then, once you have this, you compare it with the total amount of time that you have and you see if the project is viable or not. When I saw that, that the project was really viable, I started the development. One part of this, de of this development was the market research. The market research was done to see if there really was or wasn't any similar product on the market. To do it, I contacted with BJ Adaptations, an automation, no, sorry, an, uh, an adaptation uh, company uh, around the area, which uh, led me to Porca Romero, its CEO, who told me that what I was doing was an alternative communication system, and that it really was a good alternative system for the DIPG but not only for the DIPG, but for all the other diseases. Even though, however, uh, the fact that the CLIC, uh, the, sorry, the DIPG had uh, such a low rate of diagnosis, uh, it maybe not all the companies would invest in my product. Another part of the development was the brainstorming. As you know, the brainstorming uh, is defined as a collection of ideas of a group of people. But, as you see, I'm all alone on this project. Uh, what I did was a collection of all the ideas that went through my mind and picked the best ones of them. From the best ones, I made sketches. And these sketches were turned into 3D models. But before turning them into 3D models, I had to choose the app to do it. To choose, I used a selection table, where the app who got the, uh, the, the best score was Design Spar Mechanic. To learn how to use this app, I watched a series of tutorials provided by the same app. And once I had the app and learned how to use it, I started designing. The first designs were designs like these two, which I upgraded bit by bit until I got the final prototype. The final prototype was based in the app, which would relate with, it was based on the electronics, which would go in its inside, and was based on all the requirements previously established. 
The app, the app uh, is an app created by the Sunbrains. Uh, this app, what this app does is relate a series of pictograms and uh, text with the icons, where every time you get into an icon or choose an icon, you go screen by screen creating a message. This message is being registered in the lower text bar. Every icon has a specific color located in a specific position, which you can relate to the keys on the keyboard. The keys on the keyboard are also related to normal characters, uh, characters of the keyboard. This is because uh, the clip is based on a normal key keyboard motherboard. What this motherboard does is identify the entry and the exit connector uh, of the circuit you close every time you press the key. To find these connectors, I map a normal keyboard and then draw a diagram which would later help me to do well. Here. Another step was finding uh, what would go inside the clip. To do it, uh, I contacted LFB, an automation uh, company of my, uh, of my region, that uh, lent me a series of uh, micro switches, which the one who fitted most for my project was this one. This, was, this one had a very sensible touch and no, resistant, uh, no resistance, which would enable the clip to uh, fit uh, my purpose. Another part was 3D printing. 3D printing was done in two phases. Uh, the first phase was uh, done in Los Palos Padrón de Ripoll. There I printed the keys, uh, but originally I had to print the case there too. But due to the dimensions of the case, I had to contact Arai Plastics. Arai lent me their 3D printer, but that even though it was bigger, I had to cut the case in eight parts. The last part of the development was the assembly. The assembly started with the connections. In the connections, I started welding the cables to the motherboard. Then these cables were attached to a terminal strip and then crimped to a terminal, which would go into the micro switches. The second phase was the assembly. The assembly started tuning up those little details that weren't good enough printed for the 3D printers. Then colored the keys to give them a more static touch <laughs> but uh, to, be, to, to make them relatable to the icons of the app. Then uh, attached all the pieces, uh, 3D printed pieces with glue. Then put the sensors. Then attach the buttons and then attach all the remaining 3D printed pieces. The only thing that lasted was the pillow to make it more comfortable. And once I had the pillow attached, I got the final prototype. Now, the following step of the technological design process is the test. But what's a better way to do the test than here with you? So now I'm going to do a live demo of the clip in action so that you all can see how it works. Okay, so you have four languages to choose, and what the clip does is relate the colors and the location of the pictures with the, with the app. Once you press the, uh, the yellow button, you press the yellow button on the screen. So for example, if I want to say I want a glass of water because it's really hot outside, I just say communication, I want, I want to drink, and I want to drink a glass of water. It's that simple, that easy. And to end up, I just have to press this button and inform my parents or my uh, family that I want a glass of water. Mm -hmm. That simple, that easy. The last step of the technological design process is the identifications of improvements to be made. This is done by testing the final prototype to the final users. But due to the restrictions of time, I couldn't do this. Luckily, I was, able, I was able to identify some improvements to be made once I had the assembly done. These ones are, uh, have been collected in the written memory, uh, memory of my research project. But what have I learned and accomplished with this project? What are its conclusions? 
The first one is that I've gone from that click, that prototype made out of Lego, to a more reliable, stiffer, and 3D printed prototype. The second one is that I've gone from that bell to the clip, creating a new channel and a new code. Another one is that the first hypothesis that was raised was true, that with a clip, you can give kids like Murti a more easy and fluid uh, communication, make it way better. I've also learned that with the technological design process, uh, you can achieve a good product which uh, fits all the requirements that you have established. I've learned how to 3D printing works, and I've learned how to use a 3D printer, and I've learned that maybe the click cannot be commercially, uh, globally commercialized. But at last, the last thing that I've learned, the, the thing that's most important for me, because it's the thing that I've learned personally, is that with a clip, being able to say I love you would have been much easier. Thank you all for your attention.